April 13, 2016 at the Asbury Park City Council. Council Member Clayton? Here. Council Member Kendall? Here. Council Member Werner? Here. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Here. Could everybody please rise for a silent prayer, a moment of reflection, please? Flag salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. As to comply with the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231, Public Law 1975, adequate notice of this meeting has been provided in the following manner. The annual notice was forwarded to the Asbury Park Press, the Coast and the Star Ledger on January 6, 2016, and posted on a bulletin board the same date. All notices are on file with the city clerk. Um, at this time, we have a proclama uh, proclamation recognizing Arbor Day, April 29, 2016. Whereas in 1872, J. Sterling Morton proposed to Nebraska Board of Agriculture that a special day be set aside for the planting of trees and the holiday of Arbor Day was first observed with planting of more than one million trees in, ne in Nebraska. Arbor Day is now observed throughout the nation and the world. Trees can reduce the erosion of precious topsoil by wind, water, lower our heating and cooling costs, moderate the temperature, clean the air, produce oxygen, provide habitat for wildlife. Trees are a renewable resource, giving us paper, wood for our homes, fuel for our fires, and countless other products. Trees in our city increase property values, enhance the economic vitality of business areas, and beautify our, our community. Trees, wherever they are planted, are a source of joy and spiritual renewal. The mayor and council of the city of Asbury Park do hereby proclaim April 29th as Arbor Day in Asbury Park and urge all citizens to celebrate Arbor Day and support efforts to protect our trees and woodlands. Thank you. Move on to matters from the City Council. On April 30th, uh, the Quality of Life Committee is sponsoring our annual spring cleanup. And it will be from the hours of 9 to 12. We're looking for volunteers. If you'd like to come volunteer and come out and help us, we'd appreciate it. And if you have an idea of special areas that might need some special attention from us, please let us know. And I, also on that day, there will be a shredder truck. So if you have papers and items in your homes or businesses that you'd like to get rid of and you want, and they're need confidential, and you want to make sure that they're safe, this is an opportunity. So please come out. The truck will take as much as you can get it. So that's not going to be a problem. And on um, May 7th, will be the second installment of the Espongement Seminars at St. Stephen's Church. It will be from 11 to 1. So those individuals who have taken part in the first two segments, please come in for the second segment. And for other individuals, as of April 21st, the laws will change. So if you weren't eligible in the past, you may be eligible now. So please come out on May 7th, and we will bring you up to date. Where's the truck going to be located at? The truck will be located right here in City Hall parking lot. Thank you. Joe? <coughs> Jesse? No, I don't have anything to Amy? Uh, I'm just going to say thank you again to the Environment and Shade Tree Commission, <laughs> the City of Asbury Park, and the Downtown Merchants for Merchants Park. Um, which is right across the street here. It was predominantly a completely volunteer fundraising organization, and all three of those entities worked really well together to get that park off the ground. Absolutely agree. Sunday the 10th from 7 to 12 is the carp fishing tournament sponsored by the Asbury Park Fishing Club. Weigh in 12 o'clock down by the flume, $400 in prizes. Next Thursday the 21st is the rodeo for recreation. Uh, it's going to be a great evening. All the money is going directly to the children for recreation. Because it is a catered event, uh, ticket sales end Monday because we have to give the caterer a number. So we appreciate if the press, the coast of the sun could get that word out that ticket sales end on Monday. That's all. Thank you. Matters by uh, city manager. 
Thank you, Madam Clerk. At the last, at the workshop meeting on Monday, there was a question from the public concerning the job title of Mr. Garrett Giverson. It is Beach Utility Manager. That is all. Matters from the City Attorney. Um, just they can't hear you. It Garrett Giverson's title is Beach Utility Manager. Just maybe talk a little bit in the mic more if you can, Michael. Matters by the City Attorney. Yes, following our discussion of the other evening about the concession for the beach chairs and the umbrellas, some questions had been raised that evening about the two new additional items that were proposed by the contractor, one dealing with the proposal that um, in addition to the standard beach umbrellas, chaises, and chairs that had been utilized in the past, that he be permitted to utilize as well collapsible windshield umbrellas. And I had pictures that I presented to the council the other evening and we showed to the public as well as um, some storage bins at six of the beach rental stations that are involved. Um, I requested that the contractor provide a detailed written uh, rundown of what he was proposing and he provided a letter dated April 12th which I circulated to Mayor and Council and the City Manager uh, so as to give you some more information as to what's proposed. I know that is an agenda item for action this evening and that's it. Just, just to add on to that a little bit, one of the questions I had for Fred to ask uh, Mr. Pimco was obviously if these beach chairs are going to be bolted down some way to the sand, our beach rake cannot clean that area every day and he said he will have his personnel clean it every day. So that was a concern that's been answered. Thank you. And that will be made part of the contract. Right. Thank you. Okay, at this time can I have a motion to open the meeting to the public? Move it. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? <coughs> All right. Each speaker has three minutes to speak. When you do come up to the mic, please state your name and address for the record, please. Yeah, my name is uh, Henry Vaccaro. I live at 26 Sequoia Parkway, Ocean, New Jersey, formerly from Asbury Park. Mr. Mayor, good evening. Uh, I have a problem. The problem is with your master developer, iStar. The city and iStar through its predecessor, Asbury Partners, entered into a contract that required the master developer and subsequent developers to actively seek and employ local businesses, first in the city of Asbury Park, then throughout Monmouth County. To date, iStar has under contract or contracted over $125 million in work, less than 2% has been given to local businesses. I contacted iStar and asked to bid on some work and I was told, quote, you have a big mouth. Yeah, I do, but there's nothing in the agreement that says you're, you're, you're not allowed to bid if you have a big mouth. The last time I looked, there's a plaque outside this building. It says built by Henry Vaccaro. There's a plaque on a school built by Henry Vaccaro. There's a plaque on Philip Seaview Tower built by Henry Vaccaro. There's a plaque in the Berkeley Carteret Hotel, restored by Henry Vaccaro. I think I did my share. I don't want a lot of work, I just want the opportunity to do a little work. And if not, I don't have a problem seeing everybody in court. Thank you. Somebody should read the contract. Thank you. And before you even consider talking to iStar about any modifications, enforce what you have. Thank you. Robert Wiener, 601 Madison. Uh, I see the Savoy may be on the menu, so I just want to bring up a possible uh, traffic issue as early as possible. Uh, Madison Avenue is a one-way street. It ends at Cookman at a traffic light. There is no sign there that says no turn on red. About 20% of the cars I see there turn on red. Uh, when Officer Parcells was there, he used to pull everybody over when you made a turn on red. Uh, if you want to make a left on Emory, there's a green arrow uh, that occasionally comes up. However, what drivers don't know is that when you get that green arrow, there's also a green light from the Press Plaza across Cookman. Uh, I've seen many near accidents, fortunately no accidents, but <coughs> I think that's serious. And the last thing, uh, Jennifer Lampert just mentioned something last week about pedestrians crossing. So I just want to tell you that when you have to cross 
Cookman at this intersection, this is what you have to do to see what color the light is. There's no way of knowing. And if you want to see people coming out of the alehouse at 2 o'clock in the morning, that's how they have to look. So I think there should be a light there. There's no light, no, no walk, no walk, whatever. So I think this is serious. I think uh, <coughs> we have a lot of traffic coming up. When the Savoy comes, comes up between trucks and cars coming down there, and even during the summer, right now, pedestrians coming into town, there's so many people crossing that area, and I think it's dangerous. So I just wanted to bring it up. I don't know who's responsible for it. I don't know how we handle it. That was just an issue that I had. Thank you. Uh, we thank you, and I see the deputy police chief is here, and Joe Fury, the traffic officer. I'm sure we'll look into it first thing tomorrow. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Mrs. LaShawn Anderson Bray. I've come to this city of Asbury Park on a number of occasions. I'm very disgusted with this Asbury Park Police Department as a human, as a veteran, as a, a parent, and a person that lives in this community. I have come to the police department on many occasions. Number one, spoke to Detective Darius Davis. Come here, John Asian. I feel like I come here to this police department begging, begging for you all to do what you signed up to do, serve and protect. I don't know anybody here, but I know that when I signed up for the military, I didn't know anybody and I left my children to defend this country. I feel like you're not giving us any type of safety. I come to this police department, Darius Davis has intimidated me, bullied me, threatened me, called my mom and told my mom that if I come to the police department for any reason, or I fax them, they're going to lock me up. I spent all day here yesterday trying to report my truck stolen. Three summers I have been before you all telling you of the problem that I've been having with another person that lives in this community where her child, where me and my child's life was endangered. But what did you all do? You admitted me in the psychiatric hospital and ripped me out of my house in front of my home, I mean in front of my child crying. I feel like you don't care about us. I've also reached out to you on a number of times about this Asbury Park Housing Authority. I come home just not too long ago, my daughter's window is slashed open the screen and she has a crack vial. Now if somebody, all they wanna do is call diapers on me, people play diapers games all the time. I've been having nothing but problems with the Asbury Park Housing Authority. I have paper trail, I have videos, I have pictures. These people are stealing my money, which they call it misappropriation, I'm paying rent and I don't even know, I can't sleep at night. I don't know if me and my child are gonna be on the streets even though I'm paying rent. These people are antagonizing me, bothering my sanity, and they keep taking me to court for eviction. Right now, me and my child are about to be on the streets because every year around this time, they decide they wanna steal my money or misappropriation like they say, or I'm a problem and I get mad because I'm paying money for a roof over me and my child's head and safety. You guys spend $3 billion on cameras that's not hooked up, or if they are hooked up, they never know what's going on. <laughs> People are smoking crack in the hallways. That means when I take me and my child out of my front door, she's in subject to inhaling that, and if somebody called Dyfus and she has that in her system, I can get my child taken. So I just wanna know, when are you people that's crying for this money that is for the community and helping us, when are you really gonna help the community? Because I see a lot of money going. There's a lot of cities and towns that pay for Asbury residents and us not to be there. Asbury ain't broke, they getting money. So when are you gonna help us? Thank you, Michelle. Thank and you. I, I know you You've been in reach with me and the city manager. We responded to your emails and we've addressed some of the concerns. Before you leave, if you'd give a phone number to the city manager or something and let him talk to you. It's the first time I'm hearing about the complaints about the police department. In the past, it was always about the housing authority and we did address those. So yes, I, I, I will do that. But my thing is, I know my time is a little over, but my thing is, I'm just getting tired of everybody sending me around in circles to all these different people telling me no. That aggravates me. And if you think that I'm supposed to stay sane and, and be all right, I'm a parent. I gotta protect my child. Who's standing up for us? Okay, and again, before you leave, please give your phone number to the, or a Thank contact you. besides an email to the city manager. Thank you. Thank you.
Hi, I'm, my name is Linda Leahy. I'm from Fifth Avenue. Um, I have three things I wanted to bring up. Um, recycling. Uh, when I walk my dog uh, on garbage day, I see an awful lot of people not recycling cans and bottles and jars. And I don't know why there isn't someone that can go around and check on this and give these people a warning. And if they keep doing it, I know of someone specifically who's doing it, but uh, I'm not going to say. Um, anyway, um, the other thing is um, a lot of people on Fifth Avenue at the west side, uh, they're putting out piles of leaves and branches and bushes. And last year, I put out a pile in front of my house, and I got a warning from code enforcement that if I didn't, that I had to get rid of that pile in 24 hours, or I was going to get fined. Now, is there anybody going around down there giving out warnings, or is it okay for me to put out a pile from in front of my house now? Um, because I don't want to get a fine, and I am not going to go buy bags to put them in. And then the third thing is, uh, where are all the people who are working for the road department? I don't see anybody filling in any potholes. There's so many potholes, especially on Main Street, and even some on my street. I know they're paving forth. Um, all they have to do is just ride around a little and see where the really big ones are, because when I go over them, my car is shaky. A couple of times uh, there were such big holes and I didn't see them because I'm watching the traffic. And oh my God, I thought the, the whole car is going to fall apart. So isn't there somebody who can go around and check these big holes and fill them in? I know they were doing it down at the other end of uh, Main Street today, or yesterday, I saw the truck. But I don't see anybody around from the road department. I'm trying to figure out where they are. Anyway, that's all I have to say. Sorry, it's all complaints. No, <laughs> we, we, that's how sometimes we learn. Uh, oh, okay. Nobody's gonna disagree with you on the recycling. Uh, we, we know we have a problem. Uh, we're in the process of trying to fix it as soon as possible. Our tonnage we give to the county is terrible, and that, that's a priority. <laughs> mm -hmm. So we are on top of that. I believe, and Michael can correct me on all these if I'm wrong, I, I don't know what time last year you got a warning or something. I believe as of April 1st this year, you can put piles in front of your house. I, I think so. I, I'm 99% sure. Yeah. So. And, and in the past, there was controversy as far as like, what was the law and what was in the calendar and everything. I think we corrected last year saying, as of April 1st this year, you can put piles in front of your house. Put the piles in front of your house. If you get a summons, I'll pay. Uh, well, Main Street is a state highway. We, we yeah. do not fix the potholes on Main Street. We do have, we, last year we bought, we used to send out the old yellow truck with the cold patch on. And mm -hmm. the cold patch lasts a week or two, a month or two, until you have a good rain. So we bought a yeah. 64, whatever, $44,000 hot patch truck. And we're using it as much as possible when DPW is shorthanded. Uh, they do do the recycling, they do do other things. We are doing the patch job, on, and it is only a patch job on 4th Avenue. That street is not being milled and paved 100% yet because mm -hmm. videotaping it, we know we have to replace the sewer lines but we're getting it in good shape. So once the Sunset Avenue opens up in the bridge, 4th Avenue is passable. Again, we have to wait until the nice weather. It's been a screwy spring. We've had terrible weather. The plants weren't producing hot patch until just recently. So we're in a joint process, a combination process with the county where they milled it and now we're putting down the patch on 4th Avenue. And that's taken a good percentage of the DPW staff. But meanwhile, we do have a pothole truck out there and our streets are terrible, just like the recycling is. We're not gonna sit up here and sugarcoat things. We are on top of it. We're gonna be paving streets this year, next year. But meanwhile, we are trying to fill the potholes as quick as possible. Oh, that's good. And Michael, you can add anything. No, everything. 
It's okay. just playing catch up after many years of not paving streets. And, yeah, and, and Linda, by all means, don't feel like you're coming here and like upsetting us. This is how we learn. This is how we respond. And a lot okay. of times people don't know what yeah. this is going on and we're doing this and we are on top of it, but we take all constructive criticism and like, hey, pick up the pace 100% so you, you're never bothering us. Okay. Well, uh, if you don't see progress, come back in two weeks. Or uh, Again, I tell everybody, a lot of people do not realize we have a city manager that picks up his own phone. You can call him and he'll say, thank you, and he'll get back to you. And we'll get on top of it as soon as possible. And you know, if you call DPW 732-775-0900, you don't mm -hmm. get results, by all means, call the city manager's office as soon as possible. And you can call my house and I'll call the city manager. Well, I've called them quite a few times because I asked them if I... I said, can I pick my leaves and stuff? You know, I have these big nuts on the tree, those burrs. Mm -hmm. And um, so I asked them if I could put them out on the street. And they, they always tell me, no, you can't put anything out on the street. You have to put everything in bags. And I'm sorry, but I'm not going out and buying well, bags. I think that's a communication problem on our part. <laughs> I'm sure Michael's going to be calling DPW tomorrow to give them the correct information. And hopefully I'm giving you the correct information now. Michael will verify that tomorrow. And yeah. if it's wrong, I'll get in touch with you. Okay. And uh, what about the, um, the bottles that are in people's the garbage? The re recycling, I answered. We, we agree with you. We're doing a bad job, and we're looking to start doing a better job every day. So we, we are in the process of trying to correct that. I know one day my, my one next door neighbor uh, got a sticker on his garbage can that said there, there were recyclables in his garbage. But there's a few other people on the street and they just don't care. They really don't care. No, it's one of the biggest costs to us because instead of taking it to recycling, and in the past, we used to get paid for the recycling, not because the market's terrible. We have to pay them, whatever, $10 a ton. Mm -hmm. But if we take it to the dump, it's $98 a ton. So it's the biggest, it's the biggest potential cost savings for the entire city. And the sooner the taxpayers figure that out and the residents figure that out, the better we can like straighten the ship and hire more people to fix the potholes. But w we are doing a terrible job on recycling. We're looking to well, if they get a fine, they won't do it again. Okay, thank you. Right? Yep. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Joyce Grant, Asbury Park, Asbury Tower. Um, the reason that I'm here is because of Pam Lamberton. She sent me an email and she said they were discussing Bradley Cove. And uh, so this is the first time I've heard about this. You know, they said that they put a notice in it, and it was a public meeting, and, um, but I didn't know anything about this. No. So that's the first thing. The second thing is anything that is done to move forward, getting the development rights on Bradley Cove, I am absolutely for, so that this is a wonderful thing that's happening. Monmouth County coming back and saying, okay, you need to reapply again uh, for, the, uh, for the grant monies to, to um, what is it called? It's the... Um, municipal, municipal grant. The what? I think it's municipal open land. Yeah, municipal open space grant. Right, okay. So, and I'm, so I'm, I'm, I'm actually very excited about that. My concerns are, with the Green Acres funds, we have actually up until, is it December? Just this next year. So we need to, I'm not concerned with the council. I, I really feel the council is doing everything they can. My, my biggest concern is with the developer because I, I just think he can ho hold on to that forever and just, and not, not even get into negotiations about it. So that is my concern because I would love to see an oceanfront park there, a public oceanfront park there. And we're not going to be able to do that as long as they have the development rights there. So that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thanks, Trish. Yeah, so um, I was a little bit out of the loop last week. Um, and the, right, so the, the, the county came back 
And usually, Surfrider's been putting updates on the website and things like that, and they, they, they haven't been doing that either. But yeah, the county came back and said we could apply for the, the funds. The issue of timing is an important issue because it's not even until the end of the calendar year, I don't believe. I believe it was when the state legislature um, appropriated the money, which I believe we got the grant in, uh, I wanna say like May, June, and they sometimes take 18 months to appropriate the money. They did it in like two or three months. So I think by August or September, we have to clar get a clarification from the state on that. But that's when the clock starts. The one year clock starts, let's say September 1. I of think this that's year. of this year. Okay. Right. So there is the option for an extension, but the only time Green Acres gives an extension is if you've made progress in your negotiations. So this would be progress? This well, would be considered well, progress? Well, the progress is exactly the concern that you have and the concern that the council has is that where where are we with ISTAR? Where is ISTAR on the process? Okay. Right. So so we need to the, the pressure is on, the clock is ticking. Yes. Because if September comes along and we haven't made progress on a negotiation with ISTAR, the state is very likely just to pull the funds. All right. Just to do a brief recount, Joyce, of, 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 wh of what's been going on and where we're at. You, you, as you know, the city went out to bid, right, to do an appraisal. We did two appraisals. Those appraisals came in at approximately three, three point yep. two million dollars. Yep. Um, ISTAR, we then requested ISTAR to go out for an appraisal. ISTAR, um, I believe, is still going out for a second appraisal. We still have not seen that appraisal, and it's been, I think, a fair statement to say months since we, we haven't seen their appraisal. This is a company that buys and sells real estate for their main business. And to, to add to that, uh, Joyce, not only it, would it be a tragedy to lose 1.1 million oh, designated absolutely. for this park, right? That would be extremely irritating. Um, it then affects our future grant money because why is anyone giving us money if right. we're actually not going to spend it? So there are several issues going on and we um, certainly hope ISTAR starts to get to the table about the discussions. Okay, is it possible to say that you're not able to make any progress? Because I just believe they're just gonna hold on to it. They're just gonna stall you for as long as they can. And I don't think they care whether you ever get another grant. I, you know, maybe I, I just feel this way. And I think that um, because they have sort of shown this, not, not really coming forward. And well, they don't, do, they don't seem to do anything for the common good anyway. And they certainly don't seem to care about the earth because they're willing to develop on an ocean front which is already compromised. And, and so that, I, so I can, I, I just felt, is there a way that you can possibly write a letter or something that says we are not able to move forward with ISTAR? Is that, a, is that a, a something that can be done? Um, listen, I think we're open to strat strategies. Okay. And maybe um, it's certainly worth you meeting with Michael or meeting with me, Joe and Michael, and coming up with some strat. Listen, we're we're open to strategies. It, we can brainstorm that strategy and see if it, it works. Um, but we would welcome strategies on this. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hi, uh, Rita Morano, Eighth Avenue. Uh, Michael was supposed to have some answers for me tonight <coughs> about the communication director, the um, interfaith neighbors, and what was the third thing, Michael? I think you would remember that, right? Did you get my answers? Finish your statement for three minutes. All right, finished. I see you have a bond issue here coming up. How about that surplus you have for that $2 million surplus? Why don't you use that? I don't understand if you have a $2 million surplus, you go out for a bond. I mean, like, uh, we have so many bonds that are outstanding. I don't understand what that's about. And the other thing I wanted to say is about Saxman. That's coming up tonight, too. I mean, I don't know how well you're negotiating with this man, but we need a parking garage. I think you know that. If he's going to develop the Savoy Theater and get like 600 people to go there and then have the apartments upstairs, 
$3,000 is not enough for each unit for parking. It, it started out being 25,000. I don't know how it got reduced to three, but I was here when they, originally it was $25,000 of parking space. Now it's 3,000. I think uh, Councilwoman Clayton talked about that. We need a parking ramp. It, it, it's, you have a parking problem. $3,000 is not gonna cut it for each car. And first of all, it's much too little. The man is brilliant and he's very smart and he has good negotiators. I don't know who's negotiating on our end, but you gotta be pretty sharp to put up with Saxon. So I don't know why we have a bond issue when we have a surplus. And uh, I don't know, I'm waiting for my other answers. I'll say, Rita, I think the council agree, and I don't wanna speak for everyone, but I think we all agree that the $3,000 per parking fund um, is, in, is probably not working. Um, and I think Michelle and some other people are getting together to you know, figure out what is a more manageable price for the parking. In no. other words, we agree with you about the $3,000, Rita. I know, but you need a garage. You need a parking garage. You have 700 people coming to the beer garden. I mean, uh, who's building the parking garage, Rita? No, I'm just saying, you oh, have yeah. no parking spaces. Agreed. Yeah, so and the thing I would say also, Rita, is just to try to separate um, a, a, a commercial use and a residential, because there's no place or very few places and I talked when we did the interviews for planners we interviewed about 15 different planners and I asked the planner this question every single time I said would you put um, a requirement for commercial development parking requirements and everyone said absolutely not because essentially if you do that you don't have a downtown like we have the showroom would not have come in if they had to have parking all those all those places that cause people to come to draw people to our city it does, that doesn't work. So for commercial, it's not gonna work. And I mean, to be completely honest with you, I know I'm in the minority here, but there are cities now that are trying to be really progressive and they're trying to say no residential requirement for parking. Because what happens with parking is it kind of kills space, right? You don't have a, like a vibrant downtown if all you have is cars, right? So you wanna try to manage it in a way that you still have a very vibrant downtown where you can walk around and you can take your bike and you can take Uber and you can take the train but there's also some parking. And we all know that there's a problem. Nobody knows it better than maybe on the parking committee. Um, but the, the, the residential versus the, the commercial is an important distinction. And yeah, we're working on the 3,000. You still need a parking garage. Yes, we do. And you would be the first one to say, don't bond $50 million to do it because you're gonna raise my taxes. So uh, No, it's not us. It's well, him. Well, we, we, He's we the one creating the problem, and you're the one that's compounding it by not doing what he's supposed to do. He was supposed to build that ramp a long time ago when he started the Steinbach building. That, that's something we're looking into. Okay. So as how far about as your question, as far as uh, be any employee, Michael's not going to sit here, and I'm not going to sit here and say what they do. If you want to make an appointment with this person, I'll give you their phone number. It's 502-5749, and you can ask them. But we're not going to sit here and defend any employee what they do. That's ridiculous, Rita. And, I mean, when you work for the city, I'm sure the mayor and council and the city manager said the same thing. Somebody got up and said, what does Rita Morano do all day long? So if you would like to sit down with Miss Walker and ask her what she's doing, I just gave you her phone number, but we're not going to even, I'm not going to even entertain answering that. So your other question as far as what Michael didn't answer, he answered the one question earlier. And as far as like Michael explained to you why we're bonding and I know what his answer is gonna be, go ahead. Uh, first I'll address the interfaith question. I met with him on Tuesday, as I said. I haven't briefed the mayor and council on <coughs> what those findings were. So once they're briefed, then I'll answer your question publicly. And concern, consider, Concerning the bond ordinance um, and the use of surplus, the general accepted principles and practices of the International Government Finance Officers Association recommends a surplus of ten to of five to fifteen percent of your annual budget. The city is at the low end of around four percent 
um, of the budget. So when we have to go out for credit ratings, and we're going to be doing that more in the upcoming years as we move off transitional aid, we're actually going to get a negative strike, strike against us and a downgrade because our surplus isn't high enough. So what we're trying to do is not to use all the surplus because that's just very bad fiscal policy and create a stabilization fund of surplus as we move forward. You don't, I would never recommend to fully fund a capital ordinance in, uh, in our financial situation for the cost of the capital ordinance, you are only paying interest the first three years. So that's $3 million. What you're proposing to do is to hurt our financial situation by dumping $2 million into it when the actual cost over the first three years will be interest of around $30,000. So it, it allows the city to do more with less while maintaining a, a good credit rate to maintain a, a balance that's still below average to move forward as we get out of transitional aid. Uh, by the way, that employee, her, her child is Rita, horrendous. Rita, your time's I just up. want to say this. Okay, no, no, your time's up because I'm not going there about any employee as long as I'm mayor. But her title is for the people, it. right? Rita, your time is up. Thank you. Communication. Okay, it's communication. Pick up the phone, schedule an appointment, and I'm sure they'll be glad to meet with you and explain. Hi, <coughs> Maureen Nevin, Deal Lake Drive. Um, ju just, I wasn't going to ask about this, but um, Michael, your explanation about you know having to weigh uh, our credit ratings was was going to shift you know the opinion. I isn't it kind of a de delicate balance between what we have in debt versus surplus? I mean, if we if we take it out of the, if we appropriate it from that money that's uh, in that bond, right, the, the unappropriated monies, right, um, isn't that just going to raise the debt side anyway? And what, <coughs> what about the, uh, oh yeah, I'll hold off with your answer. And what, what about the legal costs too? Um, I don't know whether it's the same amount as floating the original issue. I'd like to know more about that. Um, the other thing is, you know, you're talking about the parking and parking downtown, Joe. Um, what, what's the situation with that corner over there, you know, right, right behind Main Street here on Bond, is it? Isn't that Bond? With the rebar still coming up? I mean, that could be like a four-story uh, parking garage. It, you know, who gets to sit on a property like that all this, this time? Uh, with no joy, as they say. Uh, so I guess that's it. What? I'm going to say we don't want to <coughs> interrupt you until you're done. You don't want to interrupt you until you're oh, done. Oh, okay. All right. One one PSA here. One public service announcement. <laughs> I wish, on recycling day, that the people walking their dogs would not see my recycling as their receptacle for the poop. It is infuriating. Very often, your guys, quite rightly, will not take the recycling if there's poop in there. And, and they'll even put it in the empty can, just to like, you know, like punctuate a, a fault there. So anyone out there, <laughs> please. <clears throat> okay, go ahead, guys. And the <laughs> terrible thing about that is right across the street from you is a dog recycling station and won't even use it. Absolutely. You know where I, I live. Know, I know where you it's live. Right I know across the recycling the station for the dogs is right there. It, it provides bags and it provides a trash can. But people are just too lazy and they'd rather just dump it in your recycling. At least they I pick mean, it really, up. cross the yeah, street. Yeah, they pick it up. So, yes. Uh, Thank you for pointing that out. Appreciate yeah. that, Mayor. <laughs> yeah. uh, now you made me forget your other question. Oh, the, the, the uh, bang, bond and banks? Oh, bond and banks is owned by Carter Sacker. Oh. Oh. Okay, just don't shoot the messenger. <laughs> So, uh, <laughs> I had enough time to a, respond. It was something that started, it went bankrupt, a bank owned it, the bank tried to sell it, the city was looking into buy it before the city could buy it, Mr. Sackrick bought it. So, okay, now the next question I know is a budget question for Michael. How, can you just tell me how long ago that was, how long has Sackman had it? 
guessing a fall park a year? I would have just thrown that. Okay. Time's up. Time's up. Can, that's easy. We can find out and get back to you. Thank you. Yes, you're correct that there is a very delicate balance. Um, one of the things, as you know, that the city has done over the years is they haven't had a stabilization rate of borrowing. They would borrow six or nine million dollars at a time um, and then wait like three or four years. So what the goal of any long-term debt would be would be a stable amount, say a hundred dollars a year you pay for interest and principal. Um, that analysis hasn't been done. It, that long-term debt planning, when you look at when your principal expires and what you're going to save in principal versus interest, has never been done here. That's one of the, quite honestly, questions that when we interview for the full-time CFO position, I will be asking because there is no long-term debt strategy and it should be done within the next six to 12 months because it's important. Um, <coughs> by doing it this way, by doing small, incremental, it's better and it, it provides more stabilization within the budget. The goal, obviously, is not to go more on the debt than you have to. Um, and to me, for example, if you have $100 in your budget, you want to be able to see, like, if you're going to get $25 knocked off one year, keep that $100. Um, but we don't have those plans in place, and we will. It's going to take time, but that's, as I said, it's going to be one of the, the questions that will be asked. Myself and the consultant who's doing the search for us, we've already talked about those sort of questions. Um, and so has George, the fiscal monitor from the state. We'll all be, we'll all be in the interview. So you are 100% right. It is something that needs to be looked at. We're going to address it because it's the smart way to do things. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. Tracy, can I stop you for one minute? Yeah. The shop, if you're waiting to after the meeting to give Michael your information, I, I don't want you to sit here all night if you want to go home and do it. Okay, fine. I, I, I just didn't. I didn't want you to think you had to stay to the end of the meeting. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Tracy. Tracy Rogers, Memorial Avenue. Um, just a suggestion. Uh, one of the new Fangle uh, reservation for vacation spots is Airbnb, and two cities now have contacted Airbnb and are doing arrangements to also tax those rental properties. Uh, I don't know if we're looking into that. <coughs> the property at Summerfield and Langford, I never got an answer on. Um, I'm not going to go in full depth about the abandoned properties issue that uh, selling these properties, but I want to give a little history. <coughs> the city had been given $7.5 million to accommodate three, 358 uh, affordable housing units. That was basically given by 2004. Um, the question came up whether we have <coughs> any of that money left. Right now, we have about $2.4 million in the RCA money and about 300000 <coughs> in affordable housing. So that money is there. So just a question. Um, these obligations that were presented to, the, to this council prior to this council and living up to obligations, I think this city has an obligation to meet and look at. Uh, going over and over again, the opportunity that I can give you 500 different articles that says spot, spot blight eminent domain is the right and proper thing to do. And for someone to say we're looking at a market to dictate really doesn't look at the community and which is looking to serve. Um, that's all based I want to talk about that. Uh, but there is, like I said, almost $2.8 million in affordable housing in the city, in this city, and it's been here for quite a while. So I think we need to look at being responsible, elected officials, and looking at what our options are that best suit the residents of the city. Also, talking about uh, different options. Being a transitional city, you can work with the legislation to <coughs> take some monies that are in certain places and use it in deemed on different projects. And one of the biggest concerns I hear is the roads. And I've driven around. You can accommodate some of those things by going to the legislature 
who's done it for many cities, especially under the guise that being a transitional aid, if you have some resources that you can actually use in that time, in that transition, while you're doing this long-term budget solution and problems, you can be looking at. Okay. I, I know Michael's going to give you an in-depth answer. Number one, I apologize. I know last week Tracy had scheduled a meeting, and the meeting got canceled because I was sick, and I totally apologize. But please reschedule, and if I'm sick, I'll be there. Uh, second of all, I, I, Michael probably wasn't going to mention I wasn't going to mention either. Today, Michael and I attended a meeting at Monmouth University where the assembly people from the 11th district had the assembly speaker, Prieto, there. And some of these concerns we talked about, some of them we're going to follow up on. So we are addressing some of these. Sometimes you don't see it right in the news because it happened today at Monmouth University at a roundtable discussion. And it was a very good event that we attended, and we were invited there by uh, – Eric and Joanne, the new representatives from the 11th district, and it was very enlightening and enjoyable, and we got to talk with this assembly speaker, and then I'll let Michael answer the specific question. And again, I apologize, Tracy, I was just, you didn't want to see me that day, I was so sick. No problem. But reschedule. I'll start from the end. The RCA funds, um, we sat down with Carrie, who runs the program. The RCA funds cannot be used for what you had proposed. Um, they are only used and earmarked for rehabilitation. So in order to change the program, because that was the next question, it involves court actions along what we think is going to be going back to the other municipalities because we're in agreement with them. So well, right now you can, and as I said, that was my first suggestion that you had to do that. So it wasn't something that you're coming and telling me differently. You have to do that. And But right now, since COA has been taking out of state's hands, you're going to the municipality courts and providing information that you have tried to spend this money and could not, which I can show you a track record of what your average spending has been, which has been 177000 for the last 10 years. Concerning the Airbnb, um, Newark just entered into the agreement. Um, we had the internal discussion today. Uh, Rob McEwing has reached out to both Newark and Jersey City to get their agreements and their ordinances. Um, the staff has already been mobilized internally about how to address this. Myself, uh, Michelle has been on the emails, the code department, the zoning department. We've all been working today to, to get the information. The good thing about, about this is that since it's already been vetted twice, we don't incur any of the major legal fees. Um, those two cities both have legal staff we on hand. We pay it Fred as a consultant. So it will save us a lot of money where we'll be able to do it this way. And Rob did reach out to both Newark and Jersey City, spoke to them, requested the documents, and we hope to have them in a couple of days. Thank you. Uh, the property on Summerfield and Lankford? I'm sorry, I don't have an update off the top of my head. I'll double check on that one. Hello, Felicia Simmons, Asbury Park. I'm here for two reasons. Um, first is about um, the abandoned properties and housing um, in Asbury Park. As a lifelong area resident, I'm being completely priced out. Um, a single mother and parent in town. Um, our biggest struggle is to pay our rent, which is ridiculously outpriced and um, poorly taken care of and to survive and feed our kids. It shouldn't be a choice. The only living is to pay our rent and to feed our children. I think as council people, you have to understand what's happening here in this city. When you can get a shabby, run down, one bedroom apartment and it costs $1,100 or $1,200. <laughs> to live, you have to work multiple jobs. Who's raising your children? Some of these ch children on the street that you see are from parents who have to work two and three jobs to s afford to live. Afford to live. I don't qualify for any assistance. There is not an extra EPT card or anybody else paying for anything that nourishes or clothes my children but me. It is ridiculously hard in Asbury Park. And what I was hearing this weekend at the music festival, 
at the movie festival, the music festival this weekend, people are priced out of town. It's not just me. It's everybody who's loved and lived here, can't afford to stay here. Had people coming in from LA, said they loved the city. If it was $500 cheaper or a few hundred dollars cheaper, I would stay here, but they can't live here. They're setting it up for it's not for anyone. It's not for a middle class. It's not for a below minimum class. It's not for anyone but the super rich. And as council people, you have to understand that these are the people of the community who, when you thought it was a ghost town, were staying here. It, when the new influx of people came in, it's those people being priced out too. It's for ridiculously rich, and it is not fair to the community people for us not to be forgotten. So when I hear things like no one's knocking on the door for affordable housing and things like that, there's a need. There's a ridiculous need for housing and to be able to stay here. Say in Patterson, they built in something in their redevelopment to make sure that the artists and the people of the community always had a place there because that's the heart and the spirit of a town. So when you take those things out and you put no fail safe in here, you put no fail safe for the children or the people of the community, you write us out of it. You write, you write out a dead, you write out the heart of a city, you make a dead city. All these beautiful things that people love about Asbury will no longer be here because that will be off in the wind and it will be lost in memories. It will be in some old pictures stuck up in places like this. It's not fair. thing I'm going to respond is the first time in my life I've ever heard no one's knocking on the door for affordable housing. I think that is just so disrespectful to this council and to the city. So I, that's just my personal opinion because how do you make a statement like that without knowing the facts? Thank you. Yeah. Jerry. Hello, Mayor and Council. Jerry Scrannell, Long Branch. Um, good to see <laughs> everybody here. Um, what I wanted to say about the parking, a mistake was made when they gave the developer the easy pass to say 1.5 parking spots per apartment. You need to raise the quota, because in New York City, when they have ex extra parking available, they do rent it out to the public, and that's what they could be d doing here. So you have to stick united on that, like you've been united on other things. You want more residential parking in the new building complexes. That's why we have a mess downtown, and why some people I remember when it was $25,000 the parking spot, they came here with crocodile, tear, te uh, crocodile tears with fat wallets saying, and got it down to 3,000. So you need to f fix that problem that was created by the other council. The other thing is, I was glad that Tracy brought up about the Airbus, because I wanted to ask, how are we doing with weekly rentals and the Airbus hotel fees? You're gonna copy Newark and Jersey City to see what they're doing? I just wanna say, but. Also, the other towns should be involved with us, like Ocean Grove and the other towns, because then we show that we're a leader of the pack. Because how do you rent your house like a hotel and not pay the fees or have the standards of a, of a hotel? Then the other thing is um, about the recycling. I have to agree with Maureen. I watch people throw their dog do in the recycling. So we have co businesses here in town, when they say they pass gas, they get a 300 likes, maybe they should be putting on Facebook the necessity of recycling properly. Ask the business to do it for us because people aren't going to the Asbury Park website to find out stuff, but they're always checking on the bars, what the specials are, what the events are. So maybe you should ask them to help push the recycling idea. The other thing is, I need an answer for this. We're four months into the new year and I'd like to know what steps or measures have been taken to reduce cost per department. Is there anything on paper or is it all in someone's mind? I'd like to see someone to show us that it's in writing. The other thing is I asked about bi-monthly meetings and monthly reports. We have plenty of time to start that. It, it will help you. We have an election year coming up. I'd like to see you guys get back in. I want you to have real facts to say, listen, this is what we done, not what the other council's done or the people that are running again. You will have a plan. Then the other thing is the GPS. While I was happy to hear that the city vehicles had the GPS, just like I was happy to hear that we had time clock, but 
I believe everybody should have GPS on their car, whether they're just a daily employee or a manager or a department head, because our cars are not taxi services and they're not delivery services. Uh, that's, so can people give me some answers, please? There'll be no budget committee. You didn't ask about that one. Well, we'll <laughs> see. Like I said, I've seen people come and go, no joking. Okay, next. Uh, GPS is on the code enforcement and public works right now because that's what we could afford. Yeah, so but they don't go to ShopRite and they don't go to the um, Allen Hurst <laughs> train station. Okay, that's why I wanted the managers and everybody to have them on their cars. That's we pay for the vehicles. We should know where they are at all times. It's going to be rolled out citywide, but this is all we could afford. Oh, right okay, now. that's okay, so the plan. Okay. Uh, the monthly reports, the code says quarterly. And as you've heard me say, I've asked all departments to have their first quarter reports to me by April 15th, and those will come out the end of May or the first meeting, at the end of April or first meeting of May, depending on how much time I have to assimilate everything. Okay. Um, but you, you're working on a monthly plan eventually, right, by the month? No, the code requires quarter. It's like losing weight. You have to do a pound at a time. Okay, go on. <laughs> but I lose weight, but it keeps following me. <laughs> um, I think that was it. I oh, I was saying about getting the, comp the stores to and the bars to say about recycling, the most about important about recycling. Uh, we've actually worked with the chamber a couple times and have sent out email blasts. We've, we've asked Jackie to put them in there. And when I was at the chamber breakfast last week, I believe it was, I did mention it to, okay. to the room full of people. Okay, and what about, Arab, I mean, the weekly um, rentals? How's that working out for the city? Is, it, is the system, I think it's still under review, right? It's not. It's, it's all part of the Airbnb stuff. Okay, and then residential parking, you guys will stand united about requiring more parking spots when they build the new buildings? Well, Jerry, we have to amend the plans, right? Those parking spots are in all the plans. Well, but it needs to be re revisited, like, and changed. But I appreciate you guys helping. All right, thanks a lot. And uh, just to recycling, I, I think uh, just my estimation, going back to when I worked for the city, I think the businesses do a better job recycling. Oh, than Good. residential they get because hit back with the, the recycling center is open seven days a week and all the bars all the restaurants are bringing the our, our problem is not the business our problem is residential yeah but everybody reads the business website that's all i'm saying no i i totally I agree mean, with you but yeah. i mean we're, we're getting I mean, good cooperation from the business both ladies were correct when they were talking about it i'm always amazed it's like the way it is okay, thanks. Jerry, I, I, I totally agree with you thank you motion to close move it <coughs> All in favor? Aye. We're on to acceptance of minutes. We have March 28, 2016 workshop, March 30, 2016 executive, and March 30, 2016 regular session. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Comments or questions? Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Councilmember Warner? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. All right, tonight on our uh, consent agenda, we have several resolutions. 2016-179, approving special events wedding applications as presented on April 11, 2016. 2016-180, resolution authorizing the payment of payroll in the amount of $866,377.71. 216-181, I'm sorry, that was 2016-188. 181 resolution of the city of Asbury Park, County of Mammoth, State of New Jersey, authorizing compensation payment to Tracy Lazardi Clifton upon her separation of employment. 2016 182 resolution of the city of Asbury Park, County of Mammoth, State of New Jersey, authorizing refund due to subsequent payment made in error on an exempt property. 2016 183 resolution authorizing cancellation correction and reissuance of tax sales certificate due to erroneous name. 2016-184, authorizing a tax inspector to prepare and deliver estimated 2016 third quarter tax bills. 2016-185, resolution of the City of Asbury Park, County of Monmouth State, New Jersey, authorizing refund due to a subsequent payment made in error on a redeemed lien. 2016-186, resolution to authorize year-end tax sale. 
Resolution 2016-187, approved tax sale costs. 2016-188, resolution to defer pilot erroneous bill from tax sale. 2016-189, resolution to execute agreement to participate in electronic tax sale pilot program. 2016-190, authorizing Phoenix Consulting to conduct a search for a CFO. 2016-199, 191, authorizing LSRP services for DPW facility located at 9 Main Street. 2016-192, rejecting request for proposals for IT consulting professional. And 2016-193, authorizing the submission of a grant to NJDEP's Floods Hazard Risk Reduction and Resiliency Grant Program. Would anybody like any of those items removed from the consent agenda? May I have a motion? Move it. Second. <coughs> Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Councilmember Kendall. Yes. Councilmember Warner. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. On to individual resolutions. Resolutions 2016-194. Resolution authorizing the payment of bills in the amount of $2,125,603.55. It has been requested by the administration to pull Purchase Order 16-01090, which is in the amount of $3,950. It is to Treasury State of New Jersey, which was uh, a fee for LSRP, annual fee for Springwood. Move it. Second. Comments or questions? Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Councilmember Warner? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? No. Resolution 2016-195, authorizing the award of Ocean Alpha on diffuser repair bid. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Comments or questions? Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Councilmember Warner? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2016-196, authorizing to create a seasonal bike rack request program for the CDC and commercial businesses. Can I have a motion, please? Move, Move it. Second. That, that actually should be CBD. Critical. Any other comments or questions? Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Councilmember Warner? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2016-197, approval of Bradley Cove, open space project, authorization of Asbury Park's financial participation in project, authorization of signing and execution of required documents and indicates its readiness to proceed with the project in terms of matching funds for application of the Monmouth County Municipal Open Space Grant Program for acquisition of funds. Come a motion, please. Move it. Second. Comments or questions? Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Councilmember Kendall. Yes. Councilmember Warner. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. Resolution 2016-198, a resolution of the mayor and council of the city of Asbury Park authorizing the escrow and funding agreement with Bond Galleries, LLC, for the property located at 205-209 Bond Street. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Comments or questions? Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Councilmember Kendall. Yes. Councilmember Warner. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. Resolution 2016-199, a resolution of Mayor and Council of the City of Asbury Park authorizing development agreement with Bond Galleries LLC for property located at 205-209 Bond Street. Have a motion, please. Move it. Second. Comments or questions? Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Councilmember Kendall. Yes. Councilmember Warner. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. Resolution 2016-200. Resolution of Mayor and City Council of the City of Asbury Park issuing a new hotel license to 210 Fifth Avenue Venture Urban Renewal LLC. Can I have a motion, please? Move, Move it. Second. Comments or questions? Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Councilmember Kendall. Yes. Councilmember Warner. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. <laughs> yes. Resolution 2016-201, authorizing the award of contract regarding operation of seasonal rental of umbrellas and beach chairs. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Comments or questions? 
Council Member Clayton. Yes. Council Member Kendall. Yes. Council Member Warner. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. Now on to ordinances introduction. 2015, I'm sorry, 2016-15, Ordinance of the City of Asbury Park authorizing the execution of financial agreement with AEF2 Urban Renewal LLC and Savoy Urban Renewal LLC and granting a tax exemption. Can I have a motion to introduce this ordinance, please? Move it. Second. Comments or questions? Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? <coughs> yes. Councilmember Warner? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Public hearing is scheduled for April 27, 2016. Ordinance 2016-16, bond ordinance providing for various 2016 capital improvements by and in the city of Asbury Park in the county of Monmouth, state of New Jersey, appropriating $1,750,000, therefore in authorizing the issuance of $1,662,500 bonds or notes of the city to finance a part of a cost thereof. thereof. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Any comments or questions? Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Councilmember Warner? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Public hearing for this ordinance is scheduled for April 27, 2016. Ordinance 2016-17, bond ordinance providing for various 2016 roadway improvements by and in the city of Asbury Park in the county of Monmouth State, New Jersey, appropriating $1,250,000, therefore in authorizing the issuance of $1,187,500 bonds or notes of the city to finance a part of a cost thereof. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Comments or questions? Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Councilmember Warner? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Public hearing is scheduled for April 27, 2016. Now on to second hearing, public hearings for ordinances, 2016-11, an ordinance amending and supplementing section 7-20 entitled One Way Streets of Chapter 7 Traffic of the Code of the City of Asbury Park, New Jersey. Motion to table. Second. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Councilmember Warner? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. This ordinance will be tabled to April 27, 2016. Ordinance 2016-12, an ordinance repealing Chapter 3 Police Police Regulations, Chapter 38, Use of Bicycles, and replacing said section in its entirety, Use of Bicycles, Roller Skates, and Skateboards of the Code of the City of Asbury Park, New Jersey. Can I have a motion, please, to open Ordinance 2016-20 to the public, 12 to the public? Move it. Second. Second. All in favor? Move it. All opposed? Would anybody like, anybody like to be heard on this, speak on this ordinance? Motion to close? Move it. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Can I have a motion to adopt Ordinance 2016-12, please? Move it. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Councilmember Warner? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Ordinance 2016-13, approving and adopting an amendment to Springwood Avenue Redevelopment Plan. Can I have a motion to open to public hearing for Ordinance 2016-13? Move it. Second. Michelle, you want to explain it? Huh? Michelle's going. Michelle's the planner. Oh. <coughs> She's going to explain. Okay. This is an ordinance to expand the boundary of the Springwood Avenue redevelopment plan. The main purpose for expanding this boundary is because, um, as I have presented before, the municipality wishes to uh, put in an application to NJDOT to be a urban transit village hub. And in order to do that and to incorporate 
Springwood Avenue as part of that hub, all it, it must be a con must continuously be a redevelopment area with transit-oriented friendly development standards. And in order to do that, I incorporate parts of memorial to from the light industrial district to the Springwood Avenue redevelopment area. It is the um, southern boundary of the city up to Summerfield Avenue. Um, and it, it it, um, the zoning would be that of the gateway area and the residential air area district of the Springwood Avenue redevelopment plan. I also had incorporated there that um, apartment developments need to have bike storage, new development, not existing is obviously grandfathered. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Any questions, Rita? No. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Motion. Motion. Motion to close. Second. All in favor? All opposed? Yeah. Motion to adopt ordinance 2016-13. Move it. Second. Council Member Creighton? Yes. Council Member Kendall? Yes. Council Member Moore? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Ordinance. 2016-14 bond ordinance providing for improvements to municipal parks and buildings by and in, in the city of Asbury Park in the county of Monmouth State, New Jersey, reappropriating excess bond proceeds in the amount of $127,561.80 from bond ordinance 2878 to finance the cost uh, thereof. Have a motion to open a public hearing for 2016-14. Move it. Second. Thank you. This is a uh, Maureen Nevin Delay Court. Um, Before you start, Maureen, I think Michael is just going to take a minute to explain it. To oh, okay. We had money left over from the reval from I think six or seven years ago that had never been cleared off the books. So what this is doing, it's it's not cash. It's authorized but not expended. So we don't need that ordinance canceled the reval ordinance and moved it into a general municipal park, municipal building ordinance in case we have cost overruns first at the Springwood Avenue Park and then we'll be able to use it for other park or, oops, sorry, uh, city hall public property improvements. It's money that was just allocated and just never spent that was left over. So There's no new issuance. So this is basically an appropriation that has to be approved. Yeah. Okay. Um, on those other numbers, I can squeeze in this question. On the other ordinances where they give two two numbers, two amounts, is is one is the difference between the two numbers the uh, the legal cost? No, the difference is the funded versus the unfunded amount. The funded amount is okay. part of the down payment assist requirement, which is five percent of the total issuance. So if you break out the math, and I'll send it to you tomorrow because it's easier just that way. Um, Thank you. It's. If you have a million dollar issuance, you need to have $50,000 of down payment. So this breaks down, it's a $3 million issuance. It breaks down the 150,000 between the two ordinance. That's all. Thank you. Motion to close. Move it. Second. Motion to adopt 2016-14. Move it. Second. Council Member Clayton. Yes. Council Member Kendall. Yes. Council Member Warner. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. Unless there's any other business, motion to adjourn, please. Move it. Second. All in favor? 